What's up, guys? I want to talk about leathers today. Uh, leathers are one of my favorite genres of perfume. Leathers, not letters, not A, B, C, D, but leathers. <sighs> the animalic growl of the leather perfume. And I don't even know why this is one of my favorite genres. Just Maybe just because it reminds me of life. Like leathers at one time took on a form of life. There was an energy there. It was... A living thing and um, I don't know why I feel this way but I do feel that leathers are misrepresented they're underrepresented in perfume we don't have enough leathers we have lots of leathers but we don't have enough and there might be several reasons for that first of all I don't think leathers um, it can be a challenging wear it can be um, you know, it could be it could be a heavy perfume to wear and understand, and and it takes time to uh, acquire that taste. They're not for beginners or people that just want you know fresh and clean and aren't really into um, going inside of their perfume or, or spending time thinking about it. So yeah, there's there's definitely that challenging aspect and leathers usually aren't fresh and clean. I mean, there might be some fresh and clean leather perfumes, but they're usually done in an animalic or or way that's more complex, more challenging and they're definitely for the uh, experienced nose, but this isn't a top 10 leather list. This is just me sharing my thoughts on leathers. I do plan on doing a top 10 leather list with with some friends, but that should be very fun. But this is my favorite leather. I give you my favorite leather. And I, and this is this is no surprise at all. Absolutely no. It shouldn't be a surprise. That's Queer to Rusi. And this isn't a flex either, but these are my guns. And um, I, I just love it so much. Just the idea of queer to receive this. This is eau de toilette. Two of these are eau de toilette, and the other big boy is eau de parfum, which is a little bit different, but you still get the idea of queer to receive. And this, this is a special perfume to me for many reasons. Um, first of all, it was one of my first loves from Chanel when I first got to know Chanel, and it took me a while to understand. I actually had a difficult time locating and perceiving the leather from this um but in the meantime i still found it a very lovely perfume like i loved it it was from first sniff a, a love you know it was just i felt like this is an extension of what i want to wear an extension of me and you know it's got a very soft leather but i i don't think this is a perfume for everybody I think this is kind of an acquired taste. Chanel on its own is, it can be a little bit, I wouldn't say risque, but not all Chanel's are risky. They might be more stuffy. Let's call them stuffy. They're very perfumey, and I can see why that would turn a lot of people off. So Chanel right on its own, is an acquired taste but when you get something like this you know which adds more complexity to that with that um that leather accord that russian leather um birch tar accord uh there's sexual tones to this very i get a lot of tones of you know um just a whole lot of goodness right inner thigh pubic hair going in all kinds of visuals um, I get the florals in here, jasmine, mostly jasmine, ylang, rose. And even that has a sense of, you know, it's not the easiest floral uh, combination to to get on with. Uh, the floral accord could be considered um, complex and challenging. But, I mean, overall, it's not... It's not the world's most daring leather perfume by any means. I think it's more soft and sensual and elegant. 
but I just, I don't know. I, I wear this and I absolutely adore it for, for everything, for, for, for what it is, for exactly what it is. And I feel regal wearing this. I feel aristocratic. I feel luxurious. You know, that's some words that come to my mind when I wear and smell this. So I absolutely love it. You know, it's green and yellow and brown and it smells of earth. It smells of florals. It smells of Russian leather boots. It smells of sex. It smells of like just all these amazing things. And I guess that's what I love about it. It's just, it smells like life, right? It smells very natural. It's all very natural. Nothing in here smells synthetic or off-putting to me. It's just a very beautiful uh, leathery perfume. So, um, I don't know what else I want to talk about. You know what? Let's just talk about Queer de Russi because um, I've got a bunch of leathers here, but I, I will save that. Uh, why do I think this is the greatest? Why do I feel like this is the greatest perfume, the greatest leather perfume? I think a part of that is, you know, it's been around for almost 100 years. So that alone doesn't make a perfume great. That alone being out for hundreds of years doesn't equal a great perfume. But when you take, let's say, probably the millions of people that this has brought joy to, it does add to the mystique. It does extend the life of this. It, it just gives it kind of like immortality. You know, so many people are fond of this. And that's got to add to, you know, the status of this legend. Let's, let's take like, let's, here's a, here's a modern leather, right? This is a modern leather. And as great as it is, as good as it is, you can never call this something like this, the greatest leather of all time. Cause it's just be foolish, right? This is Celine's version of a leather, which isn't even a great leather, to be honest. It's a very unique and a very strange and modern type of leather. No, nothing against, you know, Parade. I like it a lot. I would never put it in any sort of top five leathers of all time because it's, it just doesn't smell natural to me. It almost smells like you had described leather to a perfumer that's never smelled leather and took a shot, a stab at it in the dark. Right. I just don't get any leather from it. I might have like some sort of leather modern accord, but I just don't think, you know, you can take a perfume that is very young and fresh and, and give it that status. It, it doesn't have, you know, the legs to stand on. It's just kind of like a very young gazelle compared to something like Queer de Russie, where Queer de Russie is, you know... um the leader of those gazelle packs but then all right but then you take something like this and maybe i'm just contradicting myself but you take another modern leather right you take this and i would call this one of the greats this it can't even be out 10 years i imagine it's one of uh, Jean Claudelina's last Hermesants, but I love this for a leather perfume. This to me is a true leather, just as the name implies queer. It is salty, it is floral, it is it is a rough, masculine hide of leather. I know they want to call it like there's a Hermes leather bag in here, which is supposed to represent finesse, luxury the ultimate right but this to me is it's not that clean cut soft raw this is butch this is salty this is lived in skin right so i love this this is absolutely 
This is this to me is classic leather. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, but those are the kind of leathers that I like. Um there's Shepra leathers are cons uh, you know, they're I love Shepras, one of my favorite genres, and I love the leathers used in them. But and they make some great absolutely great leather perfumes like Anteus, like Shepra Palatin, like, let's say, Diagolev. And even though this isn't a Shepra, it has one of my very favorite leather accords. Um, and Shalimar, this is the... Um, Parfum initial. I don't mean the parfum initial. I don't know where my Shalimar bottle is, but I mean the original Shalimar and the leather accord used in there is one of my favorites. I love it. I love that supple leather. I like the leather better in Shalimar than what they use in Abirouge, but um, but these Shipras, right? These Shipras use very beautiful leather accords that I love these as well. This <laughs> I really struggled with. So, Animalic Accords, Leathers, Castoriums, they're not for the faint of heart. They do require more of an experienced nose. Because I almost I, I almost gagged the first time I smelled Anteus. I wasn't having it. I was, I was almost repulsed, but in the best way possible. I was addicted to the repulsiveness of it. And every time I went back to the store to check it out... I mean, to the store, I ran to Anteus to check it out again. I was just like so mesmerized by it, but it took me it took me a while to build up to loving it. It wasn't a love at first smell. I can tell you that. It was far from a love, and now it's one of my all-time favorite perfumes. So there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, there, I contradicted myself with saying you, you parade. Can't, maybe it's just that parade is not that great. Let's be honest. Good perfume, but not in in the leather genre. So, can a modern leather be great? I, I said it couldn't with parade, but then I I kind of contradicted myself with queer orange, and I'm gonna do that again right now. I'm gonna call this another fabulous leather, and it is very modern. And it might surprise a lot of people, but I love this. Bois Mysterio or Songe d'un Bois de Thé, which is a huge leather perfume. Queer was the working name of this when Thierry Vasser was um, working on the Desert Gems. And then marketing gave it the name of Mysterious Woods. But I love this. So spicy. It is extremely woody. Sharp, sharp cutting woods cedar oud probably some myrrh spices but then i get a leather it's like a leather line that run, runs like right throughout this perfume so totally masculine so masculine this is so sharply masculine it's like a blockhead it's like a dude with a square head that's how masculine head could fucking cut holes with it. Bois Mysterio. Another great leather. So yeah, I just wanted to come on and talk about leathers really quickly and and share some ideas. Here's a leather that I'm not... I don't know, I'm not crazy about. I thought I was going to love it way more, but I don't. I don't. And I know why. It... it there's something synthetic that runs throughout this queer mask. I know this is a crowd favorite, but I really struggle with this. I much prefer, I know Fumetti Turk isn't leather, but I prefer Fumetti Turk much more over this. There's just something in here that it's got this, this abrasive pinging, and I feel like I'm getting pelted right here constantly. And I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it does feel like a synthetic. So there you go. Just a little chatter on leathers. Let us know your favorite leathers. Preparing for a top five or top ten leather 
video with uh, probably Rich Mitch and I'm not sure if there was somebody else supposed to be involved or we'll figure it out. All right, so I'll talk to you soon.